Hi, I'm Tom Long. Each week I try to share with you my thoughts on a Bible passage and also some coastal images that I hope will inspire you in your own reflections on our Lord. Uh, typically, I like to reflect on the lectionary reading for the upcoming Sunday. And of course, that's not really unusual with me and that's certainly nothing new. Uh, we, we know that uh, the first historic record of there being a written uh, plan of readings for each Sunday goes all the way back to uh, the Bishop of Marseille um, who died in 465 AD. So this has been around for a while and he was building on traditions that went back before that. And then in the Second Vatican Council in the first uh, in the early 1960s, they initiated the development of a Roman Catholic lectionary, which finally came out in 1969. And it had the pattern that we follow today, which is each Sunday we do four different readings, and every three years we start over again doing the same readings. And every year we work our way through the Christian calendar. and. That is basically the pattern that was adapted in a collaboration between Catholics and Protestants in 1994, coming up with what we now know as the Revised Common Lectionary, which is where I get the readings that I do for my own reflection and study. All of that is just to point out that there is a long history of Christians following a pattern of Bible reading that brings us through the church year. And this Sunday, we leave the season known as Epiphany and prepare to enter Lent by revisiting Jesus' transfiguration. Webster defines Epiphany as, quote, a usually sudden manifestation or perception of the essential nature or meaning of something, unquote. In our case, the manifestation of the essential nature of God, these kinds of manifestations are more than a few in the Bible, but they are far from the norm. J.I. Packer titled one of his books, Knowing God. The Bible makes clear that there is a sense in which we can know God. That, ex that is, we can experience him, but it is it also makes clear in the Bible that there is a sense in which God is unknowable. What we can know and understand of God is limited. This Sunday, we come to this amazing experience of Jesus' transfiguration. Peter, James, and John followed Jesus up a high mountain. There his clothes became, quote, a dazzling white, and he himself was transfigured, metamorphed, in some way that we don't really know. The three disciples were freaking out. Peter blurted out something about building a shelter for Jesus and the two prophets that were seen with Jesus, Elijah and Moses. And the Bible says, says that uh, Peter, he did not know what to say. They were so frightened. At his baptism, God had said, to Jesus, you are my son whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. But at this epiphany, we're told a cloud covered them. And this time God spoke directly to the disciples. This is my son whom I love. Listen to him. Our pericope ends with Jesus telling them on their walk back down from the mountain not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. Mark continues to tell us in verse 10, the verse after our pericope, he continues by saying, they kept the matter to themselves, discussing what rising from the dead meant. <laughs> so they had this amazing mountaintop experience that scared them so much that they didn't know what to say. Jesus immediately reminds them of what he had already said after Peter's confession, that he, Jesus, would have to die and be raised from the dead before it would be time to tell the story of what they had seen. And that also leaves them confused. 
God reveals himself to us in different ways at different times. If I understand correctly what John said, each experience brings us a little closer to, quote, being what we will be, unquote, when we see Jesus face to face. The ultimate epiphany at the end of our earthly walk. But at the end of this earthly journey, we, like Paul said, quote, see only a reflection as in a mirror, unquote. Sometimes we'll understand what we see. Other times we're going to be like Peter, James, and John, and we won't understand what we're seeing. It's best to maintain a sense of humility about these things. But as we go on our journey, may we hear the words the Father spoke to the three disciples. This is my son whom I love, listen to him.